So we're talking about the future of Europe with a Euro-Mediterranean perspective, Central Mediterranean perspective. And this is an event of uh, extreme importance. We invite you all to attend the event. The European People's Party uh, will also be contributing uh, its views on rethinking and relaunching our meeting. And in that respect, uh, we're taking concrete steps. And the European People's Party, in its manifesto after the last European elections, indicated its aim as being creating a new community spirit, uh, able to protect and uh, enhance our Europe. And there lies the spirit of uh, our feelings towards the uh, pandemic and uh, the mistrust that in some cases has arisen in many parts of Europe with respect to European institutions, leading us to relaunching European institution on the basis of the culture and the spirit of our party. Uh, we contributed towards uh, uh, defining an intuition and a perspective, uh, relying on the strengthening of its resources uh, to allow Europe to redefine its tasks, uh, such as the redevelopment of the African continent. And our founders already understood how important it was for there to be a Mediterranean perspective of this great uh, sea, a sea of uh, culture as it has been defined, a sea that separates us from Africa, Africa which is still very far from Europe and upon which uh, good neighborhood policies are still running very late. And this is something that I'll be commenting on later. Um, the Sub-Sahara population will uh, go from 15% to 23%. It used to be 10% in 1990. Uh, almost 2 billion and a half people will live in Africa. Half of the population will have uh, younger than 26 rather than younger than 19, as it is at present. Uh, well, uh, and Europe will represent only 4% of the world uh, population and uh, the number of young people in Africa will be 10 times higher than the European ones. So, uh, so uh, there is this uh, strategic role of the south of Europe and more specifically Sicily and the south of Italy. And that is why we are launching this message to the European European People's Party to insist on the neighborhood policies, considering the Mediterranean and Africa as uh, an extraordinary uh, possibility for the future. In this part of the world, uh, that is the boundary of, uh, of Europe. It is uh, the boundary of Europe. We have the Sicilian Straits and then the Maghreb and Sub-Sahara Africa. That Straits of Sicily uh, that uh, uh, was defined as a strategic Straits uh, within uh, fought upon sea. This is a, a, a situation that must, uh, uh, well, stress how uh, important it is to have Euro-Mediterranean policies. Uh, according to what Don Sturzo said, he was the founder of the European uh, uh, People's Parties, and uh, he used to say that the Mediterranean was central to um, mankind. So we must insist as to so as to confirm that the Mediterranean is the center of this uh, European outlook and uh, by doing that uh, relaunching Europe itself. This conference uh, must uh, um, consider really the future of the Mediterranean, uh, well, uh, Europe within uh, a common initiative by the European Parliament, the Council and the Commission, whereby the European Union can demonstrate that uh, it, it, it is very attentive to the concerns and worries of European citizens. 
a, a, a recent poll that was uh, carried out by European institutions uh, demonstrated that three fourths uh, of Europeans consider that the Conference on the Future of Europe will have a, an e a, a, a a positive impact on Europe, and uh, six out of ten believe that the COVID crisis uh, led them to reconsider the future of Europe, uh, and the voice of the citizens uh, should be taken into account more carefully. And uh, the uh, this uh, new conference on the future of Europe is precisely opening up to uh, citizens a bottom-up approach, uh, so involving. Uh, well, really concentrating uh, uh, on citizens uh, and uh, uh, something that has no precedent as such in European treaties. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the neighborhood policy is uh, uh, precisely the uh, objective of uh, today's dialogue. A conference on the future of Europe that uh, may take into account neighborhood policies uh, uh, 26 years after the Barcelona conference, uh, the so-called Barcelona process, which unfortunately is far from having reached the objective of peace, stability and prosperity in the Mediterranean after the recent joint communication of the European uh, Commission and the high representative of the UN. So this renewed partnership uh, uh, well, this uh, southern neighborhood, uh, the new agenda for the Mediterranean, that's what we are having now. And it is uh, a target that uh, is uh, yet to be reached. We need a multi-level governance uh, that uh, must be guaranteed uh, involving both uh, international and local authorities. An effective uh, uh, migration policy, I, I believe uh, President uh, Tajani will underline how important this is in the European perspective to have a migration policy that will reconsider Dublin agreements envisaging financial solidarity mechanisms and uh, insisting on lawful migration, linking it up uh, with the uh, European development, economic uh, development uh, or, oriented to the south of Europe, and also to avoid any form of discrimination based on race or religion. There is a task uh, uh, by southern uh, uh, European regions uh, in uh, relaunching a neighborhood policy and also this relationship with Africa across the Mediterranean, but especially with regard to islands. Uh, the issue of islands is very close to my heart. Uh, it is one of my priority objective uh, uh, at the uh, COR. Uh, and, uh, in this respect, uh, insularity, uh, as you know, is uh, a condition we are very well aware of because uh, uh, the next uh, planning at the level of uh, at the council level is something that is of paramount importance, especially considering uh, support. So, island regions uh, must be considered as a sort of hinge between Europe and the Mediterranean, uh, with vis-a-vis uh, 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 -vis Africa. Of course, Africa is for us the privileged interlocutor for this neighborhood policy. Uh, economic and social cohesion, therefore, is uh, precisely what we must be very keen on, both with regard to the neighborhood policy and the European cohesion po policy, better uh, involving uh, the southern regions of Europe, uh, with an approach that is precisely that of the treaties. Uh, mm, where they, we read that solidarity is a fundamental value, uh, according to Article 3, uh, the Union promotes uh, the val these values, uh, economic cohesion, social and territorial cohesion among states. Uh, and this is confirmed by Article 174. And, uh, and so this economic and social cohesion that must be translated into practical mechanisms. So a real, a real attention to the Mediterranean. So a stronger Europe, because uh, it is stronger because it is, there is more cohesion. Uh, Sicily 
was one of the actors through the Messina conference in June 1955. Uh, back then, Europe uh, was going through a moment of crisis and through the Messina and Tormina conference, well, that received a big encouragement, a big hand. And we hope that this conference on the future of Europe may be a great occasion not to be missed. It is a great opportunity for European citizens to contribute to the relaunching of European institutions. Uh, we need a system of continental relations between Europe and Africa that otherwise would collapse in a matter of years considering the numbers I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation. We can work together and we can build a great, a great future. Well, well, our idea is that of Italy giving a maximum contribution. This is the meaning of today's meeting. Thank you. I'll hand the floor over to uh, Della Giovanna, is that right? Yes, yes, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. We've just heard a message from uh, the Vice President of the Sicily region, Gaetano Armao, and he um, gave us a list of things that need doing. So I'd first like to extend my warmest greetings. I'd like to say also that uh, this local dialogue, EPP local dialogue meeting was organized by uh, the uh, European COR uh, and the president of the Sicily region. And it will be streaming live. You'll be able to access it at hashtag local dialogue uh, EPP COR and so let's now very warmly welcome all of our speakers today uh, I would ask you to keep your microphone off when you're not using it and uh, I think that's about all so apart from thanking everyone once again I'll give the floor to the Honourable uh, Giuseppe Mirazzo, Member of the European Parliament and of uh, EPP Forza Italia as the Sicilian representative. So let me now give the floor to Giuseppe Mirazzo. Thank you very much and good morning. I'd like to start with a word of thanks, a very heartfelt word of thanks to the Professor, uh, Professor Armao, because what he's doing is outstanding in terms of linking, representing us uh, at the European institutions, and he's doing an extraordinary job. I mean, on a daily basis, I uh, experience our distance from Europe, and thanks to Gaetano Armao, I see that Sicily is uh, playing a, a part thanks to Armao, uh, and Sicily is really playing a, a, a central role, not in a passive way, it's really belonging to uh, and taking center stage in a very active way, thanks to Mr. Armao. And he's doing this in a very purposeful, uh, deliberate way. I listened to what he told us in his opening message. He spoke about um, re defining uh, this relationship and like to focus on his definition of the sea, which uh, he called a sea of uh, civilization, which has a thousand things in common. A thousand things may sound like a lot of things, perhaps too many, but he really gives us a very concrete depiction of the potential that the Mediterranean Sea has, our sea has. It is truly the most important sea of the world. The Mediterranean is uh, uh, rich in history, rich in culture. Today, mm, an example of multiculturalism, uh, it's a center of tourism, of employment, of trading, and of uh, a political coming together and sharing, uh, uh, even at the religious level. Uh, I mean, 
just think of our Palatine Chapel, which every time there was a new occupation, uh, it wasn't destroyed, it was appreciated, it was enhanced, and every occupying force added its tradition and its history. So uh, this is a teaching that I'm grateful for uh, through Professor Armao. I believe that what we must do is leave our mark. We must not delete other things to do that. And I'm just thinking about COVID and uh, it was mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. I think we need to remember uh, how strenuously Europe has been tested and passed this test. Of course, uh, this is only the starting point. Uh, we have a long way to go, but uh, I heard mention of Africa as well. Let's remember how important Africa is geopolitically and uh, Asia as well, China. I believe we need to focus on Africa. We have a political right uh, of uh, um, to, to uh, take an interest and focus on Africa. Uh, we need to dominate this process and uh, also keep a strong focus on what's happening in the Middle East. And I hope, I believe that the European People's Party can and must identify an internationally credible dialogue partner and be that partner to contribute peace, to contribute a sharing and an awareness of events because the Mediterranean uh, should not represent a sea of death and desolation as it sometimes is viewed. It's almost like a time machine that can take us back in time. Uh, rather than see the Mediterranean as a Sicilian issue, sometimes, in fact, it, it is not a nationwide problem. I've seen Musumeji, I've seen Armao uh, dealing with an issue that, in fact, is everyone's problem. It's an Italian problem, it's a European problem. And I think the short sightedness. Uh, that exists is uh, all too widespread. Uh, I believe if it were up to the European People's Party, there would be total freedom of movement. I see a lot of skepticism. I see uh, European uh, institutions basically uh, dropping out and m making distinctions where there should be no distinctions. I think this ought to represent an opportunity that we should all try and grasp. As quite rightly, the Vice President of the Sicily region was saying uh, the question of immigration is a serious issue. It is offering us an extraordinary opportunity. And how many jobs can our society today no longer deal with? If we were able to appreciate as resources in these immigrants, I remember um, previous, on a previous occasion, Professor Armao uh, was talking about the uh, inland areas of Sicily that are basically drying up. But were we capable of uh, adding value to these uh, regions? That would be a wonderful thing. I don't want to uh, take too much time, but I think we're also uh, hearing about the um, option of, uh, and hope for a European charter, charter that would be embedded with what we believe in and our convictions uh, with a strengthening of participation of uh, electors and voters and citizenry, for example, with the direct election of the President of the European Commission, as well as a single uh, defence policy Europe-wide, a single employment policy Europe-wide. Uh, we have uh, a situation whereby in Italy there is a certain uh, employment uh, arrangement with laws, rules and regulations. In France, there's a different one. What we need to do is try to come together and form an, a standard, a standard with no more distinctions between Italian citizens who see things one way and have a certain approach towards uh, employment versus uh, France, say, which has a completely different one. Now, all of these things today, I believe, uh, are seeing um, the approach of a new era that I believe Professor Armao is seeing as we are with the European People's Party. Professor Armao's uh, presentation uh, speaks of a Europe of hope, a Europe 
which will again be a benchmark for one and all worldwide. When people ask me in the street, uh, what, what's the matter with Europe? We were saying, uh, well, who knows? But with the People's Party today, I think we can say that uh, there are a, mul a multitude of resources that can be used and that can be spent. And here too, Sicily is playing a major role. It's a model, despite uh, the issues, the problems, uh, the pain uh, of uh, Sicily's past economic scenario and uh, financial scenario. But today, Sicily is proving its ability to plan effectively, to employ its resources effectively, rather than improvise things. Um, and uh, I think we've moved away from uh, the past and from uh, the typical improvisation that Sicily was uh, charged or accused of. And today, things are m far more concrete. Uh, I don't know whether we'll be around to um, see the uh, ultimate goal being reached. I hope we will be. Obviously, uh, every time there are new elections, uh, new people come on the scene, but I'm sure that whoever will come on the scene next time will find a Sicily in order with perspectives and with a future. And I'd like to thank you because I believe that this truly is not a meeting where we just come along and uh, say a few words. This is truly a meeting that will rely on and that will enhance the concept of planning and preparedness. And I'm more than willing and delighted to continue along this Track. Thank you very much, Honourable uh, Minazzo. Thank you for being with us today. I hope you can stay with us a bit longer because uh, we will have a discussion. I want to inform all participants that this event is recorded, is being recorded, so the use of this uh, images will be done uh, by the EPP, uh, will be used on uh, uh, social media. And now I give the floor to Sergio Caci. He's the mayor of Montalto di Castro and uh, he is a member of the Committee of the Regions uh, and uh, he belongs to the EPP and Forza Italia. Mr. Cascio, you have the floor. Scusate, non avevo attivato l'audio. Ringraziamo Leonardo e ringraziamo Leonardo e l'onorevole Gaetano Armao. I wish to thank Leonardo and uh, Gaetano Armao for organizing this dialogue on this very special subject. And I'd like to invite both him and uh, MP Milazzo. And, uh, I wish to ask both of them a question about the islands, the south of Italy and Sicily. Is it uh, a national boundary or a European boundary, a European frontier? Because that is precisely uh, what we must consider after what uh, Mr. Armao said and what uh, Mr. Milazzo said, because Quite frequently, I see that uh, President uh, Musumeci and other presidents uh, of the southern regions, as well as the mayor of Lampedusa, they are left uh, alone in, uh, I mean, in facing uh, the problem of uh, rescuing uh, uh, migrants. And I believe that is one of the major problems at the moment. That is why I, I believe that we need a European approach. We must speak of the south of Europe, not so much of the south of Italy. Uh, uh, and uh, we must be helped uh, in the management uh, of all these uh, situations. Obviously, uh, obviously, 
Europe uh, is being, uh, well, loved uh, increasingly by citizens and during the pandemics, of course, its role was extremely important. Uh, you understand a bit less what Europe is about when they want to set a traffic light on uh, uh, Italian products, but we have our Italian MPs, but also the members of the Committee of the Regions. We are there and we are willing to fight. Uh, to fight, of course, uh, with uh, uh, all this. I mean, uh, even if you drink a gallon of uh, water, the consequences would be devastating for your health. So it's not uh, certainly the wine that causes any damage to the health. It's just a matter of quantities. Uh, uh, at Maastricht, uh, the Committee of the Regions was set up, and of course it was a big step forward, mm, precisely in this idea of uh, neighborhood policy, regional policy, European policies, uh, precisely to get to know the, the real ideas uh, that European citizens have, the citizens of individual states, what they think about Europe, what they actually think about Europe. But uh, Europe must must uh, give a, a clear idea of the about the different policies uh, the cohesion policies the economic policies uh, uh, it cannot uh, go fast when it applies the same uh, telephone tariffs in all european states whereas uh, uh, there are policies that are quite different in terms of uh, taxes on in member states I know that the thing is similar also in the United States, but the differences are not as big as in Europe. And uh, we have seen that many uh, Italian companies uh, ran away and they went to other European states, uh, of course, causing a damage to our economy. All this evidence uh, must be well underlined and discussed at the European level. and. Uh, as um, Mr. Armao said, uh, well, uh, the, the fact that we do not have a European constitution, well, that was uh, uh, detrimental to the development of this European history. I hope that the vote on this European constitution, I mean, that this idea uh, may go on. Italy had approved it. Uh, France stopped uh, uh, everything and then the UK as well. So other other EU member states blocked it all. So I believe it would be a good idea to go back to the European Constitution and giving a true meaning to this union and also accelerating the policies that we, have, we are discussing today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergio uh, Caci, Mayor of Montalto di Castro. Thanks for your kind words. And in the meantime, I'm receiving word that President Tajani is trying to uh, join us from a train that he's traveling on. There are a few problems there. Hopefully he'll be with us soon and we'll have the opportunity to listen to him. In the meantime, I'll give the floor to Dr. Peter Agios, who's an EU expert on EU matters, issues. Thank you, uh, Mr. Agios, and I'll give you the floor. Tutti. Uh, many thanks uh, to President Armao and uh, to all of you for this invitation and for this initiative. I think this is a very uh, interesting discussion which uh, we need to promote. And I have followed the activity of President Armao in particular on promoting the, the, the needs and the, and the common cause of islands in the European Union. Um, I would like to share with you a perspective, uh, a personal one, essentially. Uh, but before that, I want to introduce myself so you understand where this is coming from. Essentially, I am a European official. I'm a bureaucrat, uh, which turned into a politician. Uh, I, in fact, I have contested the European Parliament elections. And I am still active in my party back at home in Malta. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a candidate for the European elections. But before that, I started, uh, I was working, first of all, in the Council Legal Service as a European official, 
then as a negotiator, as a, an advisor to negotiations in the council, where of course my job was to uh, solve disputes and propose solutions to new European legislation and find compromises between member states. And after that, I worked in the European Parliament, uh, first as a head of the office in Valletta, as a communicator. And then I had the privilege of joining the service of uh, President Tajani, who will be joining us soon. Uh, after that, as I told you, I, I, I was a European election candidate. So I know a bit of the machinery of the European Union institutions, how they produce legislation, but now, as a politician, I, I'm looking at it also from a different perspective of how to respond to the particular needs of the Maltese people in particular, because I come from Malta and I need to push forward the, the, a stronger voice for Malta in the European Union. And I trust when I say from of Malta, I trust that there are a, a whole series of issues uh, on which there is, a, there is a, an alliance, there is a, a, a President Armao said, an alliance of, of interests. But when I look at the European Union in this regard, um, given, however, uh, not, notwithstanding that there is a, an article in the treaty, as you also mentioned, which says that the European Union needs to give particular attention to regions, especially those which suffer, and I quote here Article 174 of the treaty, particular attention to regions which suffer from permanent natural handicaps, such as islands. And I believe that notwithstanding that there is indeed, there are a lot of efforts being done by several institutions on several levels to, to promote this, uh, this particular attention. I think we are still very far away from achieving this declared objective of the treaty. And even though uh, EU funding, you know, EU budgetary policy, EU cohesion policy, do effectively make a lot of difference. So if you invest more heavily in the needs of particular regions, yes, this makes a difference. But this is not enough in itself to bridge the gap between the different regions and ensure that the regions which are lagging behind actually catch up actually have the same levels of employment, economic prosperity and opportunities. So I think, I sincerely think that what we need is not simply a, a budgetary measure. I think we need to sensibilize the institutions to make them more in tune to the perspectives of islands and isolated regions. And to make sure that this Article 174 of the treaty, this particular attention to islands, is kind of ingrained in the system, is, is ingrained in a kind of a systematic test, a systematic part of the procedure which obligatorily should include the island perspective in proposed legislation. So I'm not speaking here of funding, of budgetary measures, but legislation, new laws or older laws which are being amended or implemented, which should keep an island perspectives in, in mind. And this is why I personally took the opportunity as, as a citizen, as a citizen in the context of the Future of Europe conference to present a proposal to change the way the commission operates. It's a small change, but which I think can make a lot of difference. My proposal effectively is to include the assessment of the cost of insularity in the impact assessments of the European Commission. As you know, uh, the European Commission conducts a very thorough exercise. An impact assessment, the Commission is obliged to do an impact assessment uh, before it actually presents uh, legislation to the Committee of the Regions for consultation and to the legislators for adoption and amendment. And this impact assessment is, um, includes economic, social, and environmental impacts of the proposed measures 
that the European Commission is considering before uh, it can actually submit these to the attention of the legislator. However, this kind of impact assessment is not, the, the Commission of course has a wide margin of how to conduct it. These are broadly speaking, uh, very regularly assigned to external third parties, nothing wrong with that. But the, this, this exercise normally is very generic in the sense that it assesses the impact of the legislation on, let's say, European society as a whole. There is no particular attention at that stage of the procedure on how the impact, the, the proposed legislation will affect the particular case of Sicily or Cyprus or Malta, which, as we all know, huh, they have specific challenges, particular attention, as the treaty expressly foresees. That particular attention is not therefore ingrained in the, in the way that the European Commission operates to propose new legislation. So my, my proposal is simple. I submitted this in the Future of Confer Confer uh, the Future of Europe conference. You can find it online. I will also paste a link in the in the chat here for you to consider this proposal and possibly even if you want to endorse it. My proposal is very simple. The European Commission should include obligatorily a test which assesses the impact of its proposed legislation on islands and isolated regions to actually give life to this Article 174 of the treaty and check the, and indeed ensure to have this particular attention to islands and isolated regions. And we have plenty of, of uh, examples from the past, even the recent past, where proposed legislation, which does not uh, include this assessment, uh, actually causes problems later on. Right now, there are 12, member states in court, in the European Court of Justice, challenging the new legislation of the European Commission with regards to road transport. These member states, including Malta, Cyprus, uh, and a number of other member states, are saying, listen, the proposed new rules on tracking on road capotage are having a disproportionate impact on, on isolated regions. Of course, I will not enter into the, the matter of this specific case, but this shows that we need a more systematic test to, to see that the, the needs of islands is, is ingrained in the system. That's all from my end. I will uh, continue to follow with interest the discussion and uh, um, many thanks again for this initiative. Grazie. Uh... Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Agios, for your uh, presentation. I believe we have the um, President Tajani with us. If we could possibly see him, I'm being told that he's joined us. Could we ask a control room if uh, we can get through to Antonio Tajani? No, I still don't see him. Okay, so uh, the end of this first uh, round of comments, I would give the floor to the Vice President of the Sicily region, Gaetano Armao, to hear his impression, uh, his views on what he's heard so far during this morning's session. So, Professor Armao, I'll give you the floor. And when uh, President Tajani joins us, I might just change the uh, agenda slightly. Yes, yeah, sure, absolutely. If uh, President Tajani joins us, I'll uh, disconnect. So, first of all, let me please thank our friends who've spoken this morning for the attention they've paid uh, to what I said, and also to the crucial focal point of this meeting today. And this brings me back to uh, uh, what we heard this morning, what Sergio Cacci and Giuseppe Malazzo uh, said, which is 
uh, Sicily's role in uh, the south of Italy, uh, the role that islands play in the European dimension, and uh, rethinking Frontex, rethinking migration policies. Uh, I think there really needs uh, to be a greater focus on borders within Europe. And clearly, as Giuseppe Milazzo rightly said, European Union is facing this crisis uh, with a strength that never knew it had, I think. If we look at uh, Europe a few days, years ago, uh, everyone was very much closed in watertight compartments, thinking about their GDP, uh, their um, uh, figures, numbers, parameters, and everything was all very rigid. Now, Europe is much more open, much more forward-looking, and uh, there's a considerable focus on younger generations who are seeing themselves as uh, living in a Europe that is changing. And uh, that is the whole concept uh, that we're con talking about here, Europe rethinking itself. and. I sent you a, a written version of my presentation and it'll shortly also be available in English. Um, what I tried to do was uh, consider the context, the setting of a Europe that uh, is changing, a Mediterranean that is changing very deeply uh, and an African continent that will uh, very soon be changing. If we think of uh, uh, Schumann's original text, well, I think we can just imagine how far we will be by 2050. Uh, so we're very much closer to the future than we were from Europe's roots in the past. and. Uh, uh, I know that, you know, time is moving along at warp speed. And if Europe's borders for Southern Europe, for Italy, uh, are uh, truly looking forward, then altogether we must be looking at what is happening in the Mediterranean. We're seeing migrants arriving in the Puglia region, in the Campania region, in Sicily, not just Sicily. Uh, generally speaking, uh, Italy's culture, uh, it, the south of Italy's culture is very closely tied in with Spain's and Portugal's, and uh, the same would go for Greece or Cyprus uh, in relation to Turkey, for example. So I believe that even given uh, the dramatic events of the past few days, that we're seeing over and over again on the news, it's really bringing back to the 1970s when we're seeing the Gaza Strip, uh, those dramatic pictures uh, of clashes between Palestinians and uh, Israel. It's a phenomenon that is certainly not uh, of a local nature only. And with Europe's strategy and with Europe's vision, uh, it needs to tackle uh, the issues and the challenges of the future, that is our perspective. And what we must do as the European People's Party is to convey our culture, our values, to contribute the institutional and, uh, and popular uh, concept that uh, unity is uh, uh, the answer, coming together, communicating, uh, seeking dialogue. This is what will enable us uh, to get away from a purely national view of things, uh, uh, making the Mediterranean a sea of peace and serenity. And this was in the minds of the founders of the European Union when they uh, first thought of the European community and then the European Union as the solution, the solution to those dramatic uh, dimensions of war and conflict that for decades were part and parcel of our life in Europe with uh, constant wars uh, in between short periods of peace. Uh, the past 70 years uh, have been peace, years of peace in Europe. And that has only been thanks 
to the European Union's existence. Uh, obviously, there have been uh, clashes, there have been uh, issues, but gradually Europe is becoming more integrated. And this is what we heard from uh, Giuseppe Milazzo before. The uh, idea is that of rethinking and re uh, launching a new European constitution, it cannot be a mere uh, window dressing or touch ups. Uh, we're talking about the direct election of the European Commission, for example, and I think that obviously it needs to be focused on, and Cedro Cacci was quite right also in commenting on uh, the regions and the role of the regions. Uh, which must no longer be a marginal role. They can truly make a, a, a very vital contribution towards a multi-level uh, dimension that will truly convey uh, European values, which is very much in line with our own values as a People's Party. Values uh, that pay attention to local communities, uh, to uh, local interests, and uh, the first frontier of democracy, that is local uh, authorities, local autonomies, and local communities. Uh, these local uh, authorities are closest to uh, citizens. And our party is a political party. It's a European political family that uh, can express its values, the values of Europe and uh, President von der Leyen's leadership is displaying uh, a great vision, great uh, foresightedness, particularly in regards to migration, agricultural policy. The, there are issues that need to be tackled and solved urgently, uh, but uh, relaunching neighborhood policy, relaunching European institutions, uh, it, from the standpoint of its bureaucracy and streamlining that democracy is truly something that we must work on. Let us hope that these seminars, these remote sem seminars will soon go back to being held live so that we can come together and display the uh, determination that we all have to achieve change. Thank you very much. Uh, today, we're um, adding a little food for thought that hopefully will take us further ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned uh, Sergio Cacci's comments earlier, and I believe he wants to take the floor and uh, make a few comments. Mr. Cacci, you have the floor. I take the opportunity. I take this opportunity. And uh, I wish to go back to what was said about uh, Israel, uh, what Gaetano Armao just uh, mentioned. Yes, we can hear you fine. Thank you. Well, Israel, because of course, this is a very, very uh, special, special and uh, warmly felt uh, issue. The summit uh, uh, is, uh, I think, is going on at present. Uh, President Tajani participated to an event that took place in the Jewish neighborhood in Rome, and I attended as well. And uh, there were many, many uh, Italian politicians attending. Uh, so it was not uh, 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 anything that had to do with a specific party, but all parties were represented. And I went to the website uh, of the Palestinian embassy and the ambassador, uh, the Palestinian ambassador was complaining uh, about the fact that there had been uh, very few declarations uh, by Italian politicians or European politicians about what uh, uh, was going on. Um, my experience, uh, uh, well, my experience goes back to European institutions, uh, and uh, uh, I, I, well, I recall also the experience, the experience of Mr. Milazzo and President Tajana 
in Europe, the only state that recognizes pal uh, the Palestinian state as a state is only Sweden. The other states have never recognized uh, uh, it as a state. And there were um, children at the event uh, with uh, uh, boards uh, declaring, uh, let's free uh, Palestine from Hamas. But uh, the, the public opinion uh, is not really taking sides. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, they are not uh, just siding with Israel, but of course they are considering also the difficulties of the Palestinian people. In the uh, in '89, we eliminated walls, whereas now they're they are building walls back again. Since Israel is very close to the European culture, at some point uh, Israel wanted to become a, a member of the European Europe. And so this closeness must also be uh, accompanied by some advice because the stances taken uh, Mm, lately also by the Security Council at the UN, by the Israeli president. Well, I, I, I don't I don't approve, uh, even if I had just a mayor of a small, small municipality, but I have friends who work uh, within institutions, both uh, in Palestine and Israel. And I, I don't think it is acceptable. The end. We don't hear you, Leonardo. I think you need to switch on your mic. What about now? Yes, thank you. Good. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. I'd like to like I'll ask if anybody else would like to take the floor, whether speakers or participants. You're welcome to uh, turn your mic on. Uh, make whatever comments you uh, wish to make. Otherwise, I would give the floor to Dr. Agius, if he's still with us, and uh, perhaps ask him if he has any uh, comments to make to the previous words. Uh, the same goes for Mr. Milazzo, if you'd like to take the floor. Uh, I would say to Armao and Milazzo that next time you come, I come to Sicily, I'd like to be able to uh, cross the bridge. Uh, whether you come to see us or we come to see you, uh, it would be great if we could uh, cross a, the bridge over the street. Mr. Agius, okay, you have the floor. I mean, after uh, the comments you heard from our participants, what about what sort of thoughts do you have now? Uh, uh, okay, yes. I, I, they told me to speak in English, but so I presuppongo che c'è l'interprete che che vi aiuta con l'italiano pure. Um, I I, would, I wanted maybe taking a cue from what uh, Vice President Armau said to open this discussion a bit also in the context of the recovery funds. Um, Il piano di, di rilancio di, uh, di, di recovery fund after the COVID the pandemic. I saw that uh, in Italy there was a, a very strong dimension, a regional dimension. I saw that uh, uh, the, the region of Sicily, for example, uh, made a very strong case for a number of infrastructural, infrastructural projects to be completed. Uh, I saw discussion about the airport in Mela and the, the uh, a metro a metro system in Palermo and the Stretto di Messina. Um, I'm very interested to see your perspectives of this on whether this this process is satisfactory enough. When I see when I see the, the process in Malta, um, I am I'm a bit disappointed in the sense that there is not there is no public discussion about this. Um, and uh, you know I I, I think this, this process should be wider, should involve a wider public discussion for the public to also be involved. Because after all, we have European funding, we have European regional policies, but it is fundamental that we open up 
this process to the public. Uh, this was one of the elements that can actually allow us, uh, enable us to get Europe closer to the citizens. If, if we keep the, you know, the process away from them, then it, it will become much harder for the citizens actually to feel part of this. I don't know whether uh, what kind of uh, perspectives you have uh, of this context. That's all from my end. It's a question actually more than, than a statement. Molte grazie, dottor Algios. Eh, allora, eh, volevo, oh, oh, mi sembra di, di capire che ci sia l'onorevole Milazzo, se è collegato. Purtroppo non è in maggioranza. Non è collegato, allora, mh, nel, nel ringraziare tutti coloro che sono intervenuti e prima di, di salutarci diamo le conclusioni al vicepresidente della regione siciliana il professor Gaetano Normale grazie eh, grazie all'amico Nando Di Giovanna per l'attenzione e la passione con la quale ci ha aiutato a organizzare questa iniziativa di oggi grazie anche a Piero Verona eh, a Francesco Cimò che hanno dato una mano eh, a, a organizzare grazie agli interpreti e soprattutto grazie al Partito Popolare Europeo che ha ospitato eh, questa iniziativa di oggi. Thank you for the, uh, to the European People's Party and to all those who behind the scenes and in front of the scenes have been assisting us today and I think that uh, thinking about uh, the Mediterranean perspective for the new conference on the future of Europe is a, a very original initiative and It uh, offers the opportunity to open up a whole new perspective that is quite unusual when we think about the future of Europe, but I think it will enable the European People's Party to uh, convey its values, its ideas, its uh, uh, founding engagement commitments that can truly give a useful uh, Uh, contribution to making Europe less selfish and more interested and keen to solve the challenges that lie ahead of us uh, across Europe and from north to south. So this is the perspective. I hope that today we were able to offer the uh, EPP uh, food for thought and I hope that that food for thought will in fact engage uh, citizens more closely via uh, the platform created Europe-wide to bring together ideas and proposals and uh, the thoughts of our citizenry for a Europe that truly can look uh, at its future, uh, interpret the uh, aspirations of uh, some of the uh, most troubled, more troubled areas, more marginal areas uh, so that there is a perspective of the future in the interest of the new generations. I think that's our duty. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to receive from the European institutions uh, a great uh, legacy. We need to be truly uh, able to convey the best of all that Uh, to those who come after us. Uh, thank you very much to Gaetano, Professor Gaetano Armao. It was his initiative uh, that enabled us to come together today on a very interesting subject. I'd like also to thank uh, the Honorable Giuseppe Milazzo for joining us, uh, Mayor Sergio Cacci, Professor Peter Agius. Unfortunately, uh, we had problems uh, joining with uh, Antonio Caitayani, whose secretariat uh, has sent his apologies for uh, being unable to be here today. But I'd also very much like to thank the uh, European uh, People's Party COR, uh, all the people from the party who are behind the scenes and who made this event possible. I hope there will be more like this, uh, thanks to the efforts of uh, the insularity group in the committee of the regions so uh, thanks to everyone and and arrivederci as you said hopefully next time we'll be able to meet face to face uh, 
but what matters is for us to be able to come together and talk about and think about the future of Europe. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thanks once again. Thank you. Bye-bye.